talk about all of this now with Illinois Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger. He served in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Congressman, thanks for being with us. And you just heard that report from our Brian Todd, these Russian nuclear bombers flying within 40 miles of the California coast. What is the proper reaction to this, and how would you classify this act? Well, look, it's an act of aggression, uh, but if you ever have any doubt whether the Cold War is back on, I mean, these are the kind of maneuvers that show that it is. I mean, I think there has been a reestablishment, probably not to the intensity it was in the 80s, but a reestablishment of, in essence, kind of Cold War principles where, you know, at that time, it was all a show of force from both sides. But we're seeing this literally on a weekly basis from the Russians, whether it's the U.S. mainland, whether it's parts of Europe or anywhere else. And, and actually, very interestingly, in 2006, I was deployed to Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, and I remember uh, standing outside of my, uh, where I was living there, and uh, seeing a Russian Frogfoot aircraft buzz us, at, uh, and this was in 2006 when we supposedly had good relations. So, uh, this isn't anything new by the Russians, but the stepped-up nature just goes to prove that Vladimir Putin, sometimes the small kid in class, is the biggest bully, and that's who he is. We heard the incoming chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, uh, General Joe Dunford, he says Russia's the biggest threat facing the U.S. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, th I really think so. Um, look, I mean, obviously terrorism is, is a huge threat. You have potential of, of strikes in the U.S. mainland, and it's something we ought to uh, address in a huge way. But the problem with Russia is it could take one wrong move. Vladimir Putin deciding that Estonia, Latvia, or Lithuania he can move into and that he would not invoke a NATO response, when in fact he would invoke a NATO response, and that could to, you know, at, at best a regional war, but potentially a world war scenario as NATO is uh, forced to defend uh, its own territory. And, and the problem is, again, is Vladimir Putin understands that the Russian economy is, you know, about one eighth of what the American economy is. Their military is totally incapable compared to the American military. Uh, but what he's doing is testing ours and testing the West's will. And that's why it's important for us to stand up now and make it very clear that we're not going to be bullied. I want to ask you about this targeted drone strike that we saw, we learned of yesterday, uh, killed the leader of the Khorasan group, Mussan al Fadli. Um, you know, tell us how much of a threat you think the Khorasan group poses to the homeland. It's a significant threat. This is a group that basically, it's in essence an Al Qaeda type group. Uh, they're using the instability in Syria, not because they want to overthrow Assad or they want to fight the Free Syrian Army or any, any geopolitical reasons there. They're using the mess in Syria uh, to basically plan strikes against the United States and against the West. It's in essence how Al Qaeda was in Afghanistan before 9 11. Uh, so they're a significant threat to us. I give the president and the administration credit for going after this guy. Again, I think we need to do more, uh, but let's celebrate victories where we have them and it's uh, one less terrorist and one less significant terrorist uh, that we have to worry about. You think Khorasan, given the space, could grow in the way that we saw Al-Qaeda grow? Yeah, absolutely. You have multiple jihadist groups, some which right now are focused on, in essence, the near term, destroying the government that they're hosted in right now. Some are kind of medium term, you know, other Muslims that don't believe what they believe. And then a group like Khorasan and Al-Qaeda are focused on the long term, the long term strikes against the United States and, and Western targets. Given the room to grow and breathe, this is Afghanistan pre-9-11. They'll plan, they'll finance, and they'll execute. I want to ask you about this Iran deal. Today we heard House Speaker John Boehner saying he's going to do everything possible, that's a quote, to kill this deal. But I wonder if you think there really is enough opposition in Congress, certainly from Republicans, but also from some Democrats, to get a veto-proof majority to kill the deal. Look, I, I think we're close. Uh, this is really going to be up to the Democrats. This is a bipartisan issue. Uh, there's a lot of Democrats that have as much concern as some of us on the Republican side. I think the final question is this. If you're a country that's not Iran, why wouldn't you build 5,000 centrifuges now, whether you're Saudi Arabia, UAE, Turkey, or Peru in South America? I mean, every country now has the right, in essence, because of this deal, to build 5,000 centrifuges. So you look at the precedent and setting and everything else, there's a lot of concern. It's not just a, in fact, it's not a partisan issue. All right, Congressman Adam Kinzinger, really appreciate you being with us. Thanks so much.